This video is brought to you by Sporlin, quality, integrity, and tradition. This is an interesting one. So I'm called out, they're building new construction, utilizing existing equipment, and they were just got their power turned on, and they realized that someone ripped out the existing refrigeration equipment, so they want me to give them a quote to add it to this existing box. So I'm going through this, and I gotta do a full load calculation on it and determine whether or not the existing equipment that might be on the roof is even any good. So the box is in decent shape. It's an older one, um, made by Thermal Right. So this is an older unit, but it, uh, some things that I see of problem are shelves being mounted through the space. That's not good. Um, the uh, lighting circuit, again, not my thing, but that is not watertight conduit. Going to that, there's going to be a lot of moisture in here. That J box needs to be a watertight box, so there's problems there. But other than that, the general condition of the box does not look horrible. Looks like they'll need new curtain strips and possibly new closing hardware and a door on this. Uh, if they left these shelves on here, they'd need to get some stainless steel bolts because health department's not going to go for that rust. Uh, a little concerning though, these top shelves because that's not a load-bearing wall. That's a pretty big shelf. You don't want them to set equipment or anything like that up there. Door does not close properly on its own. They are not spring-closing the hinges, which is fine, but the door closure is not springing the door shut, so these are all things we have to take into account. All right, I'm up on the roof. Now, which equipment is theirs? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, got refrigeration equipment right here, but I don't know if this is theirs. It says main walk-in and then that says nothing probably oh that's a freezer WIF but is it even being used I don't know so I got to kind of go through this that looks like the building next to it over there but my customer should have an exhaust fan too which there's an exhaust fan right here but I don't know which one's theirs I'm just trying to use known things to locate what I'm looking for here. So this makes sense that I can't find the equipment on the roof because I pop up in here and it's actually right over there. That's the original stuff from the previous tenant, but the refrigeration equipment is over in that corner. So this new equipment's gonna have to be relocated onto the roof because there's not even anywhere to access that stuff. And this, they've got split systems up here too. Those are a nightmare to service because they're going to end up filling this area with equipment. Found a better spot. Uh, it's not a good sign when you see a compressor sitting up here. Um, I'm trying to get back here right now so I can see the unit. See if that was actually the unit being used. It looks like the customer took the old stuff. And who they had changed that compressor, I don't know. They left everything up here, so. All right, I got over here. This is a 208 single phase 404A condensed unit. It's not gonna be able to be used anymore. I'm gonna suggest that they have it relocated to the roof. Um, getting up here is not gonna be feasible. Look at these uh, split systems they have over here. These are a nightmare too. They've got three of them all back to back. Person who has to work on these, man. Good gosh. Climbing through all the PVC drain lines. This is a install cluster you know what look at like the the hangers aren't even like looking very good yeah I'm not liking any of that I found a bunch of issues that they're gonna run into because they were trying to utilize existing equipment and I think they're gonna run into big problems with that so as far as the drain goes looks like we have a floor sink right here we'll be able to use that as our existing drain um, not worried about that and we'll have to have electricians get us power up onto the roof, get proper 115 volts into the box, and then we're gonna have to have a roofing contractor cut into that corrugated roof. That's not my thing. Uh, with the PTO roof on the, uh, the roof, yeah, we'll have to do that, so. Potential future problems that I see is all the existing equipment being up in there, it's not very accessible. Uh, duct detectors don't look to be hooked up properly. They're kind of a mess. 
Uh, fire suppression system, I doubt that that is up to code for a new install, but I'm not a fire suppression guy. Um, exhaust vent for the hoods. There's a hole cut in the side of it. Uh, that's a problem. Looks like this was added on after the fact. It doesn't look like it was part of the initial install. Um, they've got a swamp cooler diffuser right there, but then they have one right here and there's nothing connected to it. And then there's another split system air handler right up there. Again, not accessible because once they put refrigeration equipment or whatever they're gonna put right here, it's not gonna be accessible at all. So that's a nightmare. Um, construction disaster. They shouldn't have used this existing equipment. They should have replaced it all. They'd have been better off with, they could have done this with two package units on the roof and got rid of this complexity of a nightmare. Um, yeah, it's a, this is a headache. So, all right, we're gonna go back up and do a couple more last checks on the roof. Um, perfect world, they should have changed this box too. It's gonna be a headache. I also have to ask the customer what it is that they're looking for. Do they want it to be a freezer or a cooler? That's a whole another thing. Oh yeah, and they need to fix the electrical issues. Yeah, they gotta figure all this stuff out. I don't know if the code inspector is gonna be okay with that grout. I think they're gonna to have to have the grout clean too. Because again, they're gonna treat this as a new install. So, yeah, the code inspector is not gonna like these bolts that are galvanized and rusted. They're not gonna like any of that. Health department's gonna want it all to be stainless. Yeah, this is a giant mess. All right, so I'm back up on the roof. Got a bitch in view today. That's nice. It's uh, Mount San Antonio, Mount Baldy, whatever you wanna call it. Um, Ranch Cucamonga-ish area over there. All right, um, what I did was downstairs at the walk-in box. I think that swamp cooler right there is the swamp cooler above the walk-in, but we're gonna verify. So I counted the paces to the roof hatch. It's 30 paces that way and 34 paces that way. So we're gonna do that math, make sure that's my swamp cooler. And then that gives me an idea where the roof penetration needs to happen, but they're gonna have to get a roofer to do this because it's a corrugated metal roof underneath this. This is a shopping mall. So it's a corrugated metal roof, plus I'm not cutting into this PTO roof or any of that stuff. Looks like there's a little bit of room in the panel, but it certainly looks like it's crowded. I haven't done the math, but there's a lot of um, tandem breakers or whatever sharing one spot. So this thing might be overloaded depending on how big of a panel it is. So definitely an electrician getting involved in a perfect world. I want three phase on the roof, but I don't know if they have the room in the panel for it. This is an office with a giant transformer. They're gonna try to use this as an office. It is so flipping hot in here because of that transformer. That noise, that's nuts. This is not gonna be an office. There's no way. This is insane. Holy moly, and the heat in here because of this transformer. They have a single air conditioning vent. They're running comm lines and stuff for a computer system through what looks to be an exhaust hole. Oh no, they're not running them through it. That's coming from there. But this equipment's all gonna overheat because of this transformer. Yeah. All their existing air conditioning equipment is older, pretty beat up. This is an R22 unit. Whether or not it actually has R22 in it, I don't know. R22 is being phased out with the price of it and everything. They're seriously better off converting to 410A. Uh, this was an R22 unit too. So it's not that you can't use R22, but they're, they're asking for a headache dealing with this equipment. This one's a 410A unit. So for judging from the looks of it, that one is over the exhaust fans. They have a lot of equipment for this building. These three are over the back area. Those two exhaust fans are theirs, and this swamp cooler is theirs. So for me to do this, my equipment is probably gonna be somewhere around here. I'm gonna need a roofer to cut my penetration, give me a spot for my line set to run down. I'm gonna need the electrician to bring power up here, preferably 208 three phase, maybe 208 single phase, worst case scenario. Another thing is that giant transformer in that office makes me wonder if the original power for the building is 480 volts. And like there, now this is 208 single phase, but 
Let's go look at other people's equipment to see if it's 480 volt. This is another customer's location. And yeah, 480 volt is what this is. So the original equipment here was a 480 volt three phase and they have a step down transformer downstairs converting it to 208, lowering it for that panel. Um, so let's look at the exhaust fans. Oh my gosh. This exhaust fan is 115 volts. That's asking for a headache. That's an energy hog right there too. When they have, it's a one and a half horsepower, 115 volt fan. When they have, oh yeah, that's a mess. That's asking for trouble. This one, it could be 120 or it could be 208. It's hard to say. I don't know what it's wired for. But yeah, this is a, they really need to consider some equipment replacement here. But okay, so my existing equipment is going to be installed right in this area more than likely. So I'll take some pictures and some measurements and then that's it. We'll submit some quotes and see where it goes. All right, so you know, this is amazing. I was doing a kind of doing a favor for someone that I know professionally, you know, just basically a manager that used to work at a, a chain restaurant but moved on to bigger, better things. And um, this particular manager had asked me to come out for a new concept that they were working at, and they wanted me to give them a quote because they didn't realize until the last minute that the walk in cooler didn't have the equipment in it. Now, as you can see, as I was walking through, this place was just a massive dumpster fire. And I could clearly tell, to be honest with you, right from the beginning that um, the general, I'm not going to say that he didn't know what he was doing, but I don't think that they understood what he was doing for them in a way, right? Because I feel like the general contractor was competent and knew what he was doing within what his, his scope of work was. But I feel like the customer didn't understand what his scope of work was. You kind of get where I'm going with that. So little things like, you know, for instance, when, uh, when I walked in the door, uh, the general, uh, I was told that he could get me roof access. And, uh, when I asked him, Hey, I, I need to go ahead and get up onto the roof. He said, okay, yeah, you know, you can just go ahead and, uh, stand out front and the security cart will drive by every once in a while and just flag them down. And I said politely, uh, no, I'm going to go measure the walk-in. You go ahead and stand out there and flag down the security cart. Like that's not what I was there for. You know, I was told that they had access. So then he comes back in, I don't know, 10 minutes later. And he's like, yeah, they're not driving by. And I, I'm like, hold on. So I pick up my phone. I literally Google the name of the mall. And then I type security after the name. And then boom, I'm on the phone with security. And as I'm waiting on hold, he's like, how did you get a hold of him? And I said, I literally Googled the name of the mall. And then the next word was security. And a phone number came up and I called them and asked for security. And he's like, wow, that was smart. You know, and it's like, oh, okay. So I'm, I'm already, you know, realizing what I'm dealing with. So then as I walk to the walk and I'm just kind of picking his brain because he's been working on the site for a couple months now. And I'm just like, okay you know, what's going on here? What, you know, I'm just asking him, just making conversation. When's your projected opening date? And he's like in three weeks. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I hadn't even seen the full extent of everything yet. And then, uh, as I'm walking into the box, you know, I'm looking at everything and he's walking with me and I'm like, dude, that's not going to fly. You know, the rust on the bolts isn't going to fly. I was pretty much talking to him as I was making the video. I'm like, the rust on the bolts isn't going to fly. You know, the floors, the grout, they're not going to fly. You know, they're not going to pass that grout being that dirty. They're going to consider this a new install, you know, and and then, uh, then I start looking for the refrigeration equipment, like you guys saw, and, and it just turned into one thing leads to another, but some takeaways from this. Number one, I feel disappointed in myself for volunteering as much information as I did, because in all honesty, I don't think I'm going to get this quote, right? I didn't quote this ridiculously high, but I'm not going to lose money on this job. So I quoted it accordingly. And I also told them I can only guarantee the prices for, I think, a week or two. My supply house wouldn't even guarantee them for 30 days. I just figured, you know what, I'm going to take a gamble and say I'd guarantee them for two weeks. Um, but I told them they need to get this stuff ordered ASAP, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I haven't heard anything. It's been about a week now, so I don't think they're going to go with me, but I feel like I volunteered too much information because I ended up going back later that day at their request again, without charging them my fault and, you know, having a meeting with the higher ups and explaining all the issues that I found and, you know, what I think their best, uh, interests were doing this, doing that. And, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't, but I think that they're, 
naive in the fact that they think they're going to open in three weeks because there's no way, no way with that, the hood alone, right? They, and I'm asking, I'm like, did you guys get an engineer to spec whether or not this hood is capable of handling all the cooking equipment you're going to have under it? And they're like, uh, you know, and I'm like, there's no engineers involved. You know, I said, who, you know, the city, cause they're in an uppity city where they, you know, fancy schmancy stuff. And I'm like, the city's going to require you guys to do load calculations to make sure that the air conditioning system isn't oversized and that it's not undersized. Did you guys do that? And they're like, uh, you know, they, they were like, well, we need to talk to the architect. And I'm like, if you guys don't know, if you have a mechanical engineer already involved, then you probably don't. You know, and it's just like, wow. But who knows? Maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe I'm the one that thinks that they're not going to pass and maybe they'll pass with flying colors. I don't know, you know, um, but I feel silly for volunteering as much information as I did without charging them for that, you know. And again, this usually I don't go out and do free quotes, but this was for a friend, you know, a business acquaintance. And I'm just kind of like, hmm, yeah, you know, I volunteered a lot of information besides my scope of just a quote for a walk-in. I gave them a lot of information, almost consulted on the job, you know, and when you really think about the grand scheme of it and gave them ideas on pull the Band-Aid off now, replace, put two package units on the roof and call it good, you know, um, that hood, there's no way that hood's going to pass. And can you imagine when the fire marshal comes in and inspects the hood and sees that someone cut into the side of a UL listed grease hood, you know, that meets fire codes and different things. And, you know, that's, there, there's no way they're probably not even going to let them repair it. They're probably going to make them replace it. So this was definitely a dumpster fire, <laughs> insane one, right? I mean, that's, it's just nuts and there's no way, no way. And I'm just looking at just the operation that, that transformer alone in the back office, holy moly. I like, I can't see that meeting OSHA requirements for them to be able to work in that office within inches of that transformer, let alone the, the noise pollution that that thing creates, you know, that's going to drive someone through. It's going to send someone to the moon going crazy, listening to that noise. Even if you could work that close to that thing, I don't even know if it's health wise safe to work that close to that thing. I'm sure it puts off some kind of freaking microwaves or some weird, I don't know. I'm not a genius when it comes to that, but that's just nuts. But Hey, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, is out there. And this unfortunately is part of the reason why we have so many codes and requirements that sometimes just make it seem insane to be able to do anything without, without asking for permission. But I mean, when you get people trying to pass something like this, it's just crazy. You know, what can you do? But Hey, I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. I know this was a little bit different, but I just thought this was an interesting one, you know? Um, if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. You know, it really does help out the stream and recommend it. If you guys know anybody that might be interested in my videos, you think they'd get a kick out of it, shoot a link over, get them to subscribe too. It definitely helps out the channel. The more subscribers we have, the more views we have, obviously, um, the more interaction we have. Uh, remember I try to go live on Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific on YouTube, whenever possible work permitting, I guess. And then I also go live on Friday evenings on the HVAC overtime YouTube channel with my buddies. So come check it out. And, uh, there's links in the show notes to this video on cool, different ways that you guys can support the channel. The easiest way is just watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. Okay. Other than that, uh, be kind to one another, guys. We really need a lot more kindness in this world. It's crazy. Um, and, uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay.